800-848-3811. Devin Nunes, Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. How are you, sir? Good, Mark. Great to be back on with you. You know, uh, Mr. Chairman, this IG report and this testimony today by the Inspector General of the Department of Justice, quite remarkable what was going on at the highest levels of the FBI. We have leaking. We have lying. We have insubordination. Uh, we have collusion with the media. We have the media making payoffs to s- certain FBI officials, although we don't know who made payoffs to whom. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, and I actually think that Horowitz did a pretty good job. The the narrative that the mainstream media tried to put out is that something like they didn't find bias. And, in fact, I was glad. I thought Horowitz clarified that today. He just didn't have documentary proof of it. But I read the entire report on Saturday, and it's really, really damaging. Uh, and, you know, the question now is, 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 and I thought they alluded to it today in, in the testimony before the Senate, is this next report is going to be really interesting because, you know, how do you take all of these text messages, and now that more and more are coming out and you can match the text messages with what happened at the time, you're going to be able to see clear bias, I think, actions that were taken. And that, that will make a big difference. But people, the American people need to understand that this was only about the Clinton email decisions, not about the Russia investigation. And on the Clinton email investigation, Mr. Chairman, I, I conclude from all my years, you know, of justice and so forth, Hillary Clinton violated the Espionage Act. And you had Comey and McCabe and others who simply were not going to allow charges to be brought against her. Do you agree or disagree with me? Yeah, I think they made up their decision ahead of time. And, and if you look at, I mean, there are military personnel that have been prosecuted uh, here just in the last few years for something that, uh, in some cases, uh, the situation where you had the sailor, I think, take a picture, uh, which clearly was against the rules. He admitted it was against the rules. But the guy got booted out of the Navy and I think, mm-hmm. you know, had to do some time. I mean, so... And for, you know, the challenge with this is, Mark, and you know this, is that Clintons always were professional liars. They were completely lawyered up. It was the challenge of finding finding documentary evidence and then having to lie on circumstantial evidence, which I think would have been difficult in a case like this. Now, Chairman Nunes, I, I do have a problem with all this. We have all this activity going on at the FBI. Uh, the inspector general said Comey is now under investigation uh, with his memos, uh, class- whether some were classified, what he did with the memos, and so forth and so on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that's swell. But there's really no Mark, over... Mark, yeah. and I, I, hate, I hate to interrupt you, but no. on that point, yes, sir. I've read the Comey memos. There is no question, no question that there's classified information in there. Mm. Period, took- slam dunk classified information so now the only question is is, is you know where did those you know how did he move those emails around did he email them to himself i mean just you know you don't get to just write those and then take those and put them in your house you know classified information like that either has to be stored in a in a secure area meaning meaning in a skiff or it's got to be on a classified system and if those were sitting at his house that means there would have been spillage, which there would have had to have been cleanup, which means that evidence has to exist at the FBI or DOJ. So he had classified information. He took copies of the memos home. Uh, we know he gave one that may not have been classified to a professor, but that doesn't matter if he gave it to nobody. He took classified information home. It could not possibly meet the government standards for protecting classified information. Even if you put it in a gun vault, it's still not good. I know from my own days that that's, that's, right. that's not that's good right. enough. That's not so is that a violation of law, sir? Yes, it absolutely is. There, there is no question in my mind. That's why I, I didn't mean to interrupt you like that. No, good. Go right ahead. To, I wanted to make sure you knew there is no question about whether or not the Comey memos are, were classified. Okay, that's that's without question. That is not in doubt. Um, you know, I've read them. Many members have read them. Um, you know, it's so much so that we can't talk about what's in them because it's classified. So, I don't know how you get any more. I, I, I'm dumbstruck. Like slam dunk case. It, it, it is a slam dunk case. Now, my question, the overarching question, is: it, it, 
And, and the inspector general doesn't even have the tools to conduct a criminal investigation. You know, he's doing an administrative investigation. D- don't we really need somebody who can oversee this from a criminal perspective? I mean, we have a special counsel running around and chasing, you know, he's in Qatar and Israel and all the rest of it. I mean, here we have underlying potential criminal statutes that were violated, conduct to go along with them, individuals' names and faces to go along with them. I do not, look, I'm not into special counsels. I happen to think this one's unconstitutional, but there can be constitutional ones. Isn't it time that a special counsel or something be done to check into this? Yeah, I mean, I think the the easiest thing to do, because I, I agree with you, like these special counsels can take on a life of their own and they're very dangerous precedents to be set. But you could do it, there's a couple different ways you could do it. You could have a special counsel that would be limited in scope just to current and former DOJ and FBI people. That would be very limited. It would go in and clean it all up. I think that the American people would support something like that. Or you could have a, a prosecutor uh, from an, you know, a U.S. attorney from somewhere uh, actually get put in charge with an entire team to go and look at this. Those, those would be two easy ways to go about it. However, uh, you know, I don't look. I I think Horowitz did a great job, and I think that he did the country a service, and I think he'll do a good job on the next uh, the next one. However, as we know, that'll be a year long investigation, uh, and then you will have you know then you get the results, and then you have to make criminal referrals. It just takes a lot of time, and at this exactly. point, at this juncture, we know that laws have been broken. And so this should, you know, we shouldn't wait on the IG. There should be some sort of prosecutor put in, in the middle of this. And as you point out, this is the tip of the iceberg. We haven't gotten to um, the dossier, the FISA, the unmasking, all that activity that took place. This is, just, is there any doubt in your mind, Mr. Chairman, that the federal government, the Obama administration, that instrumentalities of the Obama administration, top level at the FBI, perhaps an intelligence agencies, the CIA, the National uh, Intelligence, and so forth, tried to interfere with this election? Um, let me tell you what I do know, what I, what I do feel confident in. I believe that there was definitely an abuse of power. Um, you're, you're much more versed at this than I am, but mm-hmm. to make the next step would mean that you're going to conspiracy. Um, now, I think you've got circumstantial evidence on behalf of Strzok and Page and maybe a few others that there's circumstantial evidence that they were going to do things so that Trump couldn't win. Uh, the challenge that you have to link this to Obama is, is, you know, if there's no documentary evidence and if Strzok or Page don't turn, right, if Strzok or Page were to turn on them and say, look, I was told by, I'm just making this up, by right. Loretta Lynch to open this investigation – and to run spies into the Trump campaign or informants or whatever you want to call it, if, you know, if Strzok was to testify to that, okay, and I'm not confirming or, or anything. No, no you're were, speculating. I'm just, I'm just speculating just because that's just for purposes of this discussion, then that would be conspiracy. That would be beyond abuse of power. Let, let me explain to my audience the reason why the congressman has to be careful is because they twist every damn thing he says. All right, let me ask you this, Mr. Chairman. What about the potential for certain rogue officials in the government? I mean, Comey and McCabe, uh, I mean, McCabe wasn't leaking because he supported Trump. I mean, Stroke wasn't just an FBI agent. He was the lead agent on both cases, on the email case and on the Russia case initially. Right. And, and the unmasking of, uh, of Flynn and other people, this sort of thing, I mean, seems to me something there was going on to try to influence the election. Well, the... So the, the, the one that, that gets me the most ticked off always is the Flynn felony leak, okay, because that one was that happened so quickly from the time that the call was intercepted to the time that it leaked out. There could have been very few people that knew about that call taking place. And the fact that, that – the very top people in the White House and the Department of Justice and FBI were the only ones that knew about the call, which means they would have to investigate themselves. It, I'm flabbergasted that Mueller didn't start there. Matter of fact, when, when Mueller was first appointed, I was like, okay, don't like special counsels, but if we're going to have one, at least he'll quickly look and find that, look, there's no collusion here, but he will, he will go after the felony. 
the felony leak of classified information. Mm-hmm. He never was going to do that from the very beginning, and and that's what. So you know, now that now after the after the fact, we learn he was never going to look at that, and now I'm concerned nobody's ever looking at that. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that is the. I mean, you, you know, you talk about leaks of classified information. Okay, uh, there's. I mean, look, all leaks are bad, but that leak is a really, really bad leak. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it doesn't get much worse than the leak of a phone call of the incoming national security advisor talking to the Russian ambassador. It does not get much worse than 